And that's what a Grand Prix. Have you ever seen anything like that before? Never, 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 never. And actually, I've never written so many notes. I can't read any of them, but I made plenty. I mean, let's just recap very briefly. Two red flags, three standing starts, multiple virtual safety cars to clear up debris and goodness knows what. And two title rivals who are driving brilliantly and the gloves are off, aren't they now? They are. And would you believe it, after all that chaos and madness and drama, they're level on points going into the last race. So it's almost as if, forget what we've done for the last 22 races, it all comes down to Abu Dhabi. You're listening to the F1 Nation podcast with me, Tom Clarkson. And me, Natalie Pinkham, and quite soon, Damon Hill as well, if we can find him, unless he's in a little sweaty puddle somewhere. Max Verstappen's hopes of coming here and sealing his first world title. Well, they're on the back burner. He's going to have to wait. Hamilton is going to give us level pegging in the championship as he comes home to win the first Saudi Arabian Grand Prix. Damon's going to join us shortly, as you say. In the meantime, though, thank goodness, we're joined by superstar David Coulthard to shed some light on the chaos. When you step back, look in, reflect, what do you take away from that race? Well, an incredible race. I don't think I've ever seen the likes, and I think we can all agree on that. We've been covering a few races over the years, but to me, clearly, the elbows have been out by both our main championship rivals, and uh, the mistakes were evident in terms of them running wide. And I don't think anyone is flawless in this Grand Prix. Do you actually think it was the right result in the end, Lewis winning this Grand Prix from Max, given everything you've just said? You know, I, can't, I wish I could just give a black and white, but I, I can't say that because I think that if you analyse Max's race, his overtake to go down the inside of both cars, Hamilton and Ocon, and still make the corner was brilliant. His use of allowing Lewis to overtake just before the DRS and then re-overtake him again and then get DRS was a brilliant piece of lateral thinking. I think there's a lot of things that would give, for me, would say that Max deserved to win this Grand Prix. Of course, you can start analysing Lewis's race, and he is still remarkable when it comes in wheel-to-wheel -wheel racing. It gets away with, he had contact with Ocon, but yet not really that damaged. He managed to run into the back of Max, and although he damaged his front wing, anyone else would have knocked their entire front wing off. He is incredible at close quarter racing and ultimately has come through and won this race. What was your initial reaction to that moment when he did run into the back of Max? And has that opinion changed when you've seen it again and, and heard the various bits of evidence? Well, given my experience of, was it 98, 99, when Michael ran into the back of me in Spa, where I was told that I had to let Michael pass, I slowed down to allow Michael pass, and then he ran into the back of me. So there was a lot of criticism of me at that time, that did I break test him, did I do something to try and help Mika in the championship? No, I just followed the instructions of the team, which was let him pass. Max has been told to let Lewis pass. He slowed down strategically in a place, and if you actually look, Lewis is slowing down, and there's no contact initially, and then when he's a little bit uncertain, I think he probably got confused as to whether there was a virtual safety car, or, and of course, you can't look at your cockpit and dash to get that information and look out the cockpit. And those, all of those thing, uh, things have come together where he's then hit the back of Max. Do you think the racing between these two guys is now getting harder? Because they made a big thing earlier in the year of saying, yeah, we can fight clean. And yet it seems that the gloves are off and uh, they're quite happy to get stuck in and Robin's racing, it seems, in Formula One. Yeah, I think that if we look at UFC, as far as I know, there's only two rules, and it's about below the belt and it's about the eyes. Everything else goes. This now feels that Formula One has been redefined as F1 UFC, and um, it, pretty much anything is going, and then the stewards are stepping. I think the standouts for me are when Rebel were given the option to give up what was the lead of the Grand Prix to then take the restart in third. I've, I've never heard anything like that before. That I need to explain to me. But is that just because we've never heard the discussion between the race director and the sporting directors no. before? That's a new thing. Do you think it's always gone on? No. We've just never heard it. No, well, I did 15 years as a driver and it never went on. So yeah, okay, in the last 13 years, things have changed. But we've never, we've never seen a grid be moved around like that ahead of the race, have we? We're now level on points. Come on then, UFC F1. <laughs> Where's it going? I mean, Max dominated the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix, didn't he? Yeah. Last year. Yeah. Who's your money on? Momentum with three wins in a row has to be with Hamilton. 
I've said earlier in, in the broadcast that I work with that I think that Lewis winning an eighth title doesn't tell us he's a brilliant driver. We knew from when he won his first, his second, his third, his fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, that he is a brilliant driver. He is the benchmark in Formula One. I think Max moves the dial in, in terms of, you know, connecting with a younger generation who are gamers. So if I take a commercial view and what's better for Formula One, I think a Max win in the World Championship is something new and exciting. But I do absolutely get those who are Lewis fans and, and Mercedes fans that it would be remarkable that Michael Schumacher's record was finally beaten. And if anyone deserves that, I think we can all agree, Lewis does. What do you think? One each? Constructors to Mercedes and drivers to Max Verstappen. Is that what, is that, that, well, I think would it, the, that the, please you, DC? I think the constructors is, is pretty much going to Mercedes. The, the money is with the constructors, but the glory and the bragging rights is with the drivers. And the it's, one that they remember. And it's with the, they remember, but I, I think let's, let's tap into our mothering and fathering instincts here. They both deserve this title. We've said time and time again, it would be a shame for whoever loses this. Do you think, obviously emotions are running very high at the moment, there's a lot of tension. Do you think when the dust settles, both of them will be able to reflect on this as an incredible year and they were pushed in ways, tested in ways that neither of them had been before and both ultimately raised their game as a result? I think you're spot on. I think that this is a remarkable situation, a remarkable championship. And I wonder, a bit like we saw Prost and Senna, who had, you know, wouldn't even be in the same room as each other at a certain point, then came together. If you remember Ayrton's last victory, and or, or was it actually, yeah, it was his last victory, and he called Alain up on the, the podium in Adelaide. And they, as far as I understood it, ended up, it's so much racing respect, even though they didn't like each other at a certain point, it was almost like they would, they would be buddies into the sunset. Can we see in 10 years time, Max and Lewis going on a boat trip together? I don't know, the world has moved on, but there's one thing for sure, they are the class of the field. DC, an extraordinary thing yesterday after uh, qualifying, they, they came into the press conference room and Lewis likes to get changed into his Tommy Hilfiger gear, get out of the ovals. And I thought there would be a bit of stony silence from Max because he just made that mistake. And yet there was genuine banter. Lewis said to him, what happened, man? And then Max explained, and there was, I was really surprised at just how open they were with each other. Uh, less so after the race, I've got to be honest with you, yeah. but there is, I think, that deep-rooted respect between those two. I would agree. I, I think there is respect there. They're, they're different people, they're different generations. They're, they're clearly not going to sit down and, and you know, have a nice dinner together, but I think that they're both professional. You know, Max has got maturity beyond his years. He's had that since he saw him get his first victory at about 17. And he, I think that at the end of the day, they know that this championship, neither of them want to, to just accept that they, they're going to you know, lose a title. They've given us a rare piece of racing history. And, you know, we are spectators to this. But I think that for, for those who are not as close to the action as, as us, this has been a brilliant championship and more people are, t are tuning into Formula One than we've seen in previous years. It's certainly been a pleasure to watch and it's been a pleasure to have you on this podcast. Yes. So thank you very much for your time. 13 time Grand Prix winner, David Coulthard. Great to have you, DC. Thank you very much. Now, Nats and I have come down yeah. to Red Bull. And so while we're just at Red Bull, getting the temperature down here. We're going to go up to Mercedes later, aren't we, Nats? But friend of the pod, Alex Albon, uh, test and reserve driver. I like to call you future Williams driver now. It's like so, we're yeah, so nice. nearly there, aren't we, right? <laughs> it's, it's, it's within touching distance. But take your PR hat off. What do you make of it? I think it's, um, it's, it's brewing, and each race it brews more and more. And you think, oh, OK, that was, a, that was a close one. I think already in... Um, We've had it a few times this year, but this was the pinnacle of, I don't know what you call it. I, I feel like it's, it's kind of chaos, <laughs> to be honest with you. I enjoy it. I think all of us enjoy it, but it's, it's, uh, it seems like a lot of it's being done in the stewards rather than on track. Well, that's the thing, isn't it? Because it's compelling, but we don't want a championship to be decided by penalties. Interestingly, I spoke to someone at home straight after the race and they said, None of us knew what was going to happen. The only thing we did know was that they would come into contact with each other. And that's a bit of a shame, isn't it, when you get to that point? I think as a driver, you know, especially before it even got let past, you knew, you knew what Max was doing. Lewis knew also what Max was doing. And it just brewed up to the point where that DRS sign was getting closer and closer. 
and both of them were trying to make sure they weren't the one in front to the point where they were almost walking speed. And, and that was the point where obviously it was, uh, there was some context. Taking it away from the race, yes. Alex, this racetrack, you've done a million laps on the simulator. Yes, um, yeah, we have. So you've heard what Max and Checo yes. and Yuki, of course, uh, have been course. saying about it. Yeah, Look, yeah. What did they make of it? Just talk. Incredible. I, I think yeah. um, the consequences of a crash in the way that it was either going to be always a red flag or there was going to be a high chance of a car going quickly through a corner in a blind corner, hitting a stationary car. That was the main concern. But in terms of qualifying, in terms of being on the limit, straight away it was, uh, it was pretty impressive. You know, we have to put walls up artificially on the sim to make sure we respect them. And indeed so. Yeah, it was, uh, it was, it was a tricky one. Obviously, um, we all loved it. What do you think about the rule whereby drivers can change their tyres under a red flag? I don't think it's fair, but I think it has to be changed at the end of the year. That's, that's what I think. Because you can't... Before you go to Williams. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Perfect. Um, yeah, because I think it, it, it's tricky. It's that pre if it's changing all the time, that's when... I think it works out well in a, in a weird way, because I think, you know, with Lewis and Imola and here, it kind of balanced itself out, I think, without going too philosophical, <laughs> the world finds a way uh, to balance itself out. So as long as it happens at the end, yeah. Hey, well, look, it's lovely to have you on the show. Thank, Thank you, you so much, Alex. Very Thank you, much. everyone. Thank you. Time is ticking away, and not only to the end of the Formula One season, but the countdown to Christmas is fully underway. That means there are stockings to be stuffed, and luckily our good friends at Manscaped are bursting with gift ideas. Whether it's for your partner, your dad, your brother, your friend, get them something that they will actually use and is almost sure to get a laugh. There are gifts small enough to fit in a stocking, but big enough to change a man's life. Like the Manscaped Signature Cologne, or how about this, the Shears 2.0 Luxury 4-Piece Nail Kit. Or, if you're feeling really mischievous, the Crop Mop Ball Wipes, yes. And don't forget the ultimate gift at the top of every man's wish list this year is the best-selling Performance Package 4.0, which includes a lawnmower body trimmer, the Weed Whacker ear and nose hair trimmer, and a plethora of liquid formulations to maximize your hygiene routine. You know the ones I'm talking about. So get 20% off and free shipping with the code F1Nation at manscaped.com. That's 20% off and free shipping at manscaped.com and use the code F1Nation. Hey, Damon, we, we've had a, a bit of David Coulthard in your absence, yeah, a bit of Alex Albon. So how, how have you been? What did you make of all of that? I thought it had everything. I think it had a little bit of, you know, quite a lot of spice and a lot of controversy, a lot of very difficult decisions. I mean, the uh, race director would have been on the edge of his seat trying to think on his feet and all the rest of those expressions because decisions that can affect a world championship, nobody wants to be the guy that says, OK, I'm now going to make a race decision that could mean that that person's not going to become world champion. They, they have got the, the policy of let them race. So he's, he's trying his very best, I think, to let things go. But then there are times when it's beyond what he can let go. I think there are times when he has to say, OK, that is not allowed. That is allowed. And I'm, I'm not going to allow that to happen again. You know, so he's, he's got a lot of work to get done. Uh, there may be well, they're going to they're going to be doing a massive be debrief. Everyone will be on this race. Christian Horn has joined us now. Uh, he's look he's got some traces. Uh, that's a lap chart. Is that interesting? Lap chart. Yeah. Yeah. Can I ask just how your stress levels are? Are you exhausted? They're all okay. I mean, it's that was a it was a busy race. It was a tough race. Um, it was like negotiating down at the souk for most of it with race control. But um, uh, you know, it's frustrating to come out of it. We always seem. I don't know, we're just not getting the rub of the green at the moment and uh, we've got one more shot, you know, next weekend. It's interesting you should say the rub of the green because certainly after the red flag it looked like you had got just that, but this was a race that just, there were just so many subplots evolving all the time. Well, yeah, and, and again, marginal penalties, you know, it is, it is what it is. Uh, we've got one more shot, we go into Abu Dhabi, tied on points ahead, virtue of race wins. We have to beat him there. 
Christian, you say you haven't had the rub of the green, but I mean, if you look back at this weekend particularly, Max had his pole position virtually in his hands and then yep. he had his uh, incident, which meant that he wasn't going to start from pole, he started from third and then he got a fantastic start. Yep. And then uh, he stayed out of the safety car and then you got red flag. So that was good luck in a sense. Yeah. And also it made it to the finish where you were gambling um, yeah. whether or not the gearbox would last. Yeah, well. I thought the penalty was harsh. I thought the five second penalty was harsh. Well, I'm trying to work out the five second penalty because the five second penalty, was that for? That was for running straight on, I think, at the restart yeah. here. So he, he made, a, made a place there and he was asked uh, to give it back? Uh, he was asked to, uh, Lewis had a run, didn't he, on him? And they both went wide, they both went deep, they both went off. Yeah. And then it was deemed that, that Max had gained an advantage and, you know, was given the, uh, given the five second penalty. But when was he asked to give the place back then? For what was he asked to give the place back for? It's a very good question. There were so many bloody incidents in that, in that race. That was for, I think, another incident like that. Um, yeah. And then we did tell him to give the place back. And... Obviously, you know, he then backed off in the last sector. It was obvious Lewis didn't want to get the DRS, you know, so, or didn't want Max to get the DRS. So then he's backed off and it was a question of how slow could they go before that line? Well, I mean, I, and then, I, I'm I trying to add up all... But then you see Lewis yeah. then runs Max off the track at the last turn, but that's okay. You know, here we are going to the last race. And it's something I've said to all the boys in the garage, they can be massively proud that they've taken this fight to Mercedes, a team that's won everything in the last seven years. Nobody's come anywhere close. I mean, Ferrari got challenged up to a summer break once or twice, but, you know, with a few assisted parts. And then, uh, you know, nobody's could push them anywhere close. We have given it everything. We've thrown everything out this year. And we go to the last race, you know, still in with a shout. The constructors is a long shot. But the drivers, you know, we have to beat Lewis Hamilton one time this year. Come on, let's let's be positive about yep. Abu Dhabi, Christian. Max dominated that race last year. Yes, I know, but they've changed the layout, and unfortunately, the engine speed that Hamilton has it's unraced. I mean, he was a second quicker today, second quicker in sectors two and three. Max would pull out half a second by turn thirteen, and you know you can't defend against that. It's the most frustrating thing for a driver to be sitting with that kind of deficit, and that's that's what I think has been really frustrating the last. Three, four races have just been, you know, we've been just watching that that dominant straight line performance, which you can't can't do anything about. Okay, well, Christian, we've loved what you guys have done this no, year. Come not, on, we've still not, got one no, more though. No, it's not over yet. We've got seven days, and uh, you know, Max is a fighter. And if there's a driver that deserves to win this world championship, it's Max Verstappen because Mercedes have had the better car. He has driven outstandingly. Look how close Valtteri has been to Lewis this year. Max has been head and shoulders for me, the driver of the year. And if, you know, he would be very deserving, you know, to win this championship. You know, the way he's driven this year, the way he's conducted himself, I think has been outstanding. Yeah. And how good was that lap in qualifying up until that last corner? I think it was the best lap we've ever had in one of our cars. Up until that corner, I would think it was. But, you know, it'll get forgotten about because it didn't get finished. You know, so it was a great, it was, it was an outstanding lap. And I think that, uh, I don't think people actually realize what Max is doing in that car. I, we, I really think I they don't do. think people recognize that we haven't had the best car all year. Max Verstappen has lifted this. Well, I and think you're right. You can see the difference between him and Checo, for example, yeah. versus Lewis Valtteri and Valtteri. And, uh, yeah. yeah. And I think that he deserves all the credit. As to yeah. you, by the way, can I just say, well, like, I know that you're exhausted and feeling quite flat now. Do you know what I think you need? Other than a big hug a with Bull, Jerry, you probably need a Red Bull, but you probably need a drink. We haven't been able to have a drink you're in, in you're Saudi. In, you're in the wrong place. You need, for a, that, you need a cold so, beer anyway. and you deserve so, it. Look, we will come back. We will be a fighting. We will attack this last race with Course everything we have. If we don't win it, it won't be for a lack of trying. Thank you very much. Christian, well done. Thank you. Very powerful words there about Max Verstappen. Thank you, Christian. Yep. The best lap we've ever had in one of our cars up until the last corner. It was pretty awesome, wasn't it? He, he seems and, flat, uh, though, don't you think? He just seems so flat. It, well, and exhausted. Exhausted, yeah. Yeah, but, you know, Natalie, you know, these guys, it's... It's, it's everything, a, a it's all whole, consuming, weekend, isn't it? It's massive, and it's over now, and so the adrenaline stops, and you, yeah. you kind of, you go through a bit of a flat period, and then you pick yourself up again. 
but you do need to you do need to kind of wind down yeah uh it used to take me till about tuesday i mean i used to not be able to sleep uh, on the sunday monday i was still up and then about monday night i'd start to go down a bit and yeah and then kind of pick myself up again after tuesday <laughs> <laughs> it was a lot of energy expended in absolutely but actually on a serious point when you've got back-to-back -back races can you afford to even come down at all yeah you've got to you've got to recharge your batteries somehow and switch off but i mean they'll be doing they'll be doing what they can i think the stress on a team um principal like christian is huge you know and the, and then all the designers as he, he didn't mention adrian but i know adrian has been so consumed all consumed with this as are, as are every member of the team, but you can imagine they so dearly want to win a championship and you don't get close this many times and they have led it so many times during the season. So I don't wholly agree with the things that Christian uh, is saying that I, you know, I think that Lewis would be a worthy champion if he was to win it. I think they both would be worthy champions. Mm. I, I think that the question for me is whether the ambition that Max has needs to be reined in a little bit because you know he's he's really on the edge all the time of incurring penalties and and um i think there are times when you have to say okay we don't want to be penalized we don't want to have an overtake that's at the expense of another penalty you know and i think that's but then you you can't change people like that he's max has got to where he is through uh his driving style and his approach to racing and that's that's what that's what he does and it might also be a reflection of him being in what Christian says is the inferior car. You, you, you have to... I don't think Adrian would call it the inferior car. <laughs> I and I they, don't think it has been. I don't think Honda you know, wants to be... When you no. reflect on the season, there's been certain tracks where it's clearly been dominant. Well, I mean, look. just look at Austria. And it seems, feels like a very long time ago now. But it was just... The swing back in Max's favour there was... You thought, oh, this is championship done. And then it came all the way back again. So we have come 50 meters down the paddock and we're now at Mercedes where it's a little bit wet and sticky, the seat I'm sitting on. Uh, and we're joined by the gaffer. Not champagne, no. It can't be sticky, it's water. Is it water or yeah. is it Vard? Is it bottom that's sticky? <laughs> <laughs> is it Vard? Is it rose water or not? No, it it's water. mineral water. Okay. So it can't be sticky unless you've been sticky all around. Well, <laughs> I bet it tastes as sweet as champagne though, doesn't it, Soto? Yeah, for today, yes, but I'm so superstitious that when, you're, when your emotions are running away today and you feel like it's all um, uh, la vie en rose, all great, and the next week you're losing the championship, you, you feel like a little bit like a fool, so I want to stop too much of a foire. But the emotional roller coaster of this weekend, just talk us through it, including qualifying, because Max was really fast. I'd imagine during that lap you were thinking, oh no, pole position slipping away, and then... Well, we came here with a, with a mindset that we have the strongest car. And then we found out actually on a single lap, uh, we didn't. And, and far off from that, four tenths behind, we were hoping that um, uh, in the race the car would be better, similar to the long runs we had. And uh, that's, what we, that's what we had today. So I, so I think even him starting from pole position wouldn't have made a big difference because our car was just stronger. But the race was so messy, so confusing that I think we could have lost the race twice with a, with a damage and at the end to finish first and third is great. I mean, this sort of takes the tests of your managerial skills to a whole new level, doesn't it? I mean, how, how do you look after the team at such a crucial part of the season? It's been such a long season and you're managing them, you're managing Lewis, managing your own stress levels, well, getting I didn't, some sleep. I didn't know I'm sleeping really well. Um, I, I woke up this morning and um, I think I told you before that I thought lying in bed, it's such a privilege to be part of such a season. It's one of the best um, there has been and uh, emotions are running high. Formula One is in a good place with, our, with the fans. And, uh, you know, in 10 or 20 years, I'm going to think whatever the result was, it was just an unbelievable ride. Do you know the only thing that can make your emotions look even more extreme is slow motion? Have you seen it back, you and Bradley Lord? Yeah, I heard there's some, some memes, but I'm happy that he's in the picture because that makes me look <laughs> pretty good, actually. Yeah, sometimes we, we get quite heated and because we are so emotional. I don't think it was the great best advertising for Bose headphones or I, I'm not sure I was on brand with Mercedes, but I think they will forgive me. Now, Toto, you said after Brazil, 
Uh, you, you praised Lewis Hamilton saying he's gone to another level. Uh, did you see that from him again here this weekend? I mean, those lap times he was doing with that broken front wing. Where did that come from? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. We, we lost 10 points. We he lost. got fastest lap, didn't he? With, well, he with, got with, fastest with lap. The we lost ten. He got faster and faster the less bits he had on the car, though. Looks at him. Yeah. That's the answer. Just snap the bits off yeah. before Abu Dhabi. That's a good. Let's uh, let's cut all the winglets, uh, little uh, fl flips and flicks off the front wing end plate and go faster. No, he's just in a good place. And coming into this weekend, I guess this is what you'd hope for. The result you got. Yes, um, definitely. We, we, we made a big jump forward in a constructor championship because Sergio didn't finish and we are on equal points with Max. Uh, I think this is a best case scenario, but it's just at zero. So in Abu Dhabi, it's um, whoever wins, wins the championship. And I'm going to ask you uh, a question on behalf of the listeners, because I do get asked this a lot. Seems that Max and Lewis genuine respect and people want to know what about you and Christian Horner? I think we will show respect after the championship is won, either direction. My expectations have been low since uh, after Mexico. We didn't even think that we would be in the run uh, to the championship. So in a way, we still have that feeling and I'm nourishing uh, this feeling that we have only to gain. And um, if we were really in that position, I, I think as heated as it, as it can be between individuals, um, it's going to calm down. Now, obviously, you're because of the Netflix series, you're now all massive Hollywood stars. Uh, Nick, just, 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 just tell the fans and, tell, and put our minds at rest. You're not just putting this on, are you? I mean, this race really did happen, didn't it? And all that rivalry between you and Christian, it's, it's genuine? Yeah, it's absolutely genuine because there is so much at stake. Uh, it's ambitious people, ambitious teams uh, that are fighting really tooth to nail. Is that how you say it, for this championship? And once you're in that, I think you have... You, there's just no ability in your in your mind to even create a, 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 a space for another person. At least for me, I have no negative nor positive um, emotions, but I'm trying to really stay in that place. Sometimes I was carried away when I heard a comment that annoyed me, but only twice this season. The rest is no emotion, neither positive nor negative. Is it possible for Form Formula One? We've seen so many seasons over the years, and if you look at it from the outside, you'd have to say, these people seem to hate each other's guts. <laughs> you know, it always seems to end in some sort of awful kind of, he tried to do this to me, who tried to do that. Is, it, is, it, is that just impossible, do you think? There's so much at stake? Yeah, it is impossible to just have a, a, a relationship because there's so much at stake. Everybody trying to, just trying to defend the interests of the team. We are very different personalities also, the way we probably perceive the world and I, I try to just stay authentic to what I believe is right, and um, and he does it his way. And um, maybe in the future we can we can have a laugh about it, but not today. I know that Lewis has been quite critical of Max's driving today, and <clears throat> some have raised a concern that, given that they're level on points going into the last race, and Max would win on countback, there's a possibility that he would deliberately take Lewis out. Surely that's not possible, is it? No, I think a deliberate taking out uh, would not be on uh, also with the FIA. But overstepping the red line and making it very hard for someone to overtake or risking a, risking a, a crash is, uh, is bad enough. And I think we'd under any circumstance need to, uh, need to avoid that for Abu Dhabi. We, in Brazil, a decision was taken that it wasn't penalized. And today we saw uh, repercussions from that, actually. Multiple similar situations. And I think here it's now where we need to put the brake in and say we can't race like this. Is there undue pressure on Michael Massey and the stewards though? M Michael clearly does have a lot of influence and it's like he, people lobby to sway his opinion but I mean it's a lot on one man's shoulders. Yeah it's a lot on his shoulders and uh, someone is always going to complain. We were pretty upset with the, with the red flag at the beginning. Uh, at that uh, moment we thought that's it. We've lost the championship. And um, I think it's also for him and everybody involved, we just need to stay calm in Abu Dhabi, make sure that the decisions we take are properly taken, uh, considering the gravity and the, the, uh, of uh, the championship. We're just being joined by George Russell now. Uh, just catching up with your future boss. Yeah, I quite enjoyed watching that race from the sidelines today. Was, <laughs> <laughs> of all the races to retire, probably uh, that was the best uh, one. Well, George, just quickly, when you were hit 
by Mazepin. That looked horrible. Yeah, it was quite shocking, to be honest. I mean, I came from the inside of turn two and I could see the crash happening ahead of me. So I slowed down because cars were everywhere. And um, yeah, just suddenly got smashed from, from behind. So I'm fine, but just a bit frustrating to end the race like that. I think he couldn't, um, um, Nikita couldn't avoid that. No, no, no. no. It's yeah. one of those things, you know, you're, you're focusing on moving forward and he was tucked right behind me. I went on the brakes and um, you're not expecting a driver to go on the brakes. In George, that position, bad so. end to your weekend, but did you like the racetrack? I mean, I loved the racetrack. It was, you know, incredibly exhilarating. It was so fast from a pure driving perspective, you know, incredibly exhilarating. Well, it'll be even faster for you next year when you're in a Mercedes. So <laughs> just, hope so. just one more race to go. For Williams before you you come across to, to these Absolutely. guys, I, I mean it must be impossible not to be thinking about next season. But you have got uh, Abu Dhabi to I'm get a true through professional. first. Oh, Focus yes. on the job at hand you and are. then worry are. about the future. Of course you mm -hmm. are. <laughs> <laughs> no, of course, incredibly excited. Starting Abu Dhabi, testing, and um, yeah, wishing these guys all the best for for next week. But they don't need it. Great stuff. Thanks, George. Did you get see my you. message on the visor? I got your message, yeah. I, I didn't know what to reply to you, so Toto wrote me a nice little message. Uh, maybe, uh, we'll keep that between us on my visor before FP2 on. Actually, actually a compliment. Uh, so usually the, the helmet guy writes on the visor how many tear-offs you've got and if it's a sunny visor and five. I think, yeah, five tear-offs. It actually always looks like he writes Toto on there because he writes 10 TO, which is tear-offs. But the one looks like a T. So I always used to think, why do you write in Toto on my visor often? And then, um, yeah, Toto took over this week on the helmet duty and wrote me a lovely little, little message on there. I saw the helmet up there and I thought, I got to leave him a message. It began with F, it had a K in it. And it ended with R. And ended with R. So but, uh, <laughs> George, you got, you got, I saw someone at Lewis says, like, so it sounds like you've got quite a good driver coach for next year. He said some nice, nice things about wanting to help you. Yeah, I think there's um, a lot of respect between Lewis and I. I think we're in very different stages of our career. And, um, you know, Lewis is the guy he is for a reason. You know, he's uh, the greatest of all time. And I think we go in there, we need to help each other because next year the cars are just going to be developing so much race after race and it's not who has the quickest car at race one it's who has the quickest car uh, throughout the whole season and us drivers need to work together with the teams to to move us forward as one and uh, that's going to be the key well it sounds like he's going to pass a fantastic baton on to you if uh, if it comes to that so good luck for that wonderful See you later. See you. Thank you, George. And Toto, I know you've got to go, but uh, just seeing a Williams man here with us. Toto, just quickly, there was a lovely, lovely moment uh, before the race today when the entire Formula One paddock, drivers from every team, personnel from every team, paid their respects to Frank Williams. What were you thinking during that minute's silence? Oh, well, I have some super um, experiences with Frank. I had a laugh uh, at, uh, sometimes, and um, for me, he stands. Him and Nikki just stand for stand for resilience, stamina, uh, never give up, um, never complain. I haven't heard Frank complaining once, and I've seen him how he struggled in in and out of an airplane and in and out of a car. Not one word, and that is just unbelievable. It's been a hell of a weekend. It's gonna be an amazing weekend next weekend in Abu Dhabi whichever way it falls uh, best of luck from us I hope so I hope so it's not that in seven days we remember how cheerful we were <laughs> a Sunday night in Jeddah and then it's all all it's depressed motorized. it's motor yeah let's hope not thank you Toto yeah. thank you for, thank you for your time well we have to go you we, guys we, have we, got to go can I, can I say one of the highlights of our record this evening was just watching Toto holding the microphone for George <laughs> It was very good, paddling away. It was great. So many, you guys have got to go. Have you? You've got to catch the bus. Well, well, no, sorry, we've got to we go. We have a flight, we've which goes in a few hours, and I haven't packed and haven't eaten. But I sound like I'm Are you getting hungry? I'm getting. I will get hungry in a minute. Oh, he gets we mad. Yeah, but frankly, we won't have. We won't actually have any uh, anyone to get us back to the hotel if we're not careful. So yeah. we're running out of time, as always, with Formula One. Because it's what a long race that was. You know, given that we thought it was going to be quick and oh. fast. Oh my God! That was supposed to be one of the quickest races of all time, next yeah. to Monza. Well, <laughs> forget it that was brilliant. one. Brilliant! And there's so much we haven't discussed. But just for people who want to know the top ten, of course, it's Lewis and Max. That's where we've been on the pod tonight. Valtteri third, Esteban Ocon, oh. tremendous race by him to fourth. He just yeah. got done on the line, didn't he, by Valtteri? Great race by Valtteri. Ocon genuinely welled up in the pen. 
because he was just so gutted to miss out on that um, on that podium. Right. Would have he been fought a like a lion, though. Ah, <laughs> very good. Yeah, he's always there when there's jeopardy. Esteban's there, isn't he? So Ocon fourth, Dan Ricardo fifth. Great to see him back up there. Yep, and then Gasly sixth, Leclerc seventh. Just pipped his teammate in uh, the dying moments of the race. And Giovinazzi, the best race he's had all season in ninth. Can you believe it? He's leaving the sport. He saves his best to last. And then Norris managed to salvage a point and get tucked into the 10 after being done really by that red flag, wasn't he? So he'd been looking good all weekend. He felt that he had enough uh, to qualify up in fourth yesterday and thought they'd be in for a strong weekend. But um, yeah, it didn't. It worked against him, let's say, with the red flag. But he managed to, he managed to get a single point. Hold your horses, guys. News is just coming through that Max Verstappen has been given a 10 second penalty for causing a collision. Well, that's not going to make any difference to the finishing order, thank goodness. So it is still Lewis Hamilton in P1, Max Verstappen in P2. He doesn't drop any further down the field and Valtteri Bottas in P3. So we go to Abu Dhabi with them equal on points. It's what you might call game on. Can't wait. I mean, really can't wait. It's going to be great. We'll see you there, Tom. F1 Nation is produced by F1 in association with Audio Boom Studios.